Jason Kay. How was rock and roll started? Rock and roll is a genre of popular music that originated in the United States during the late 1940s and early 1950s, primarily from Af African American blues, country, jazz, and gospel music. Though elements of rock and roll can be heard in country records of the 1930s, rock and roll did not acquire its name until the 1950s. Most historians trace the beginning of rock back to the year 1954 when a new type of music, then called rock and roll, appeared and revolutionized musical tastes around the world. How has rock changed compared to today's music? The most noticeable is the disappearance of the supergroup. In the 50s, 60s, and 70s, bands like the Beatles, Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, and Pink Floyd redefined music. Those artists had enduring careers largely because, at the time, record labels believed in truly developing an artist. They were signed because a label saw something in them that they could help develop and cultivate over time. The pressure to deliver a hit single right away didn't exist. Today, most labels give bands one shot. The other big change in music is the genres and subgenres. Fifty years ago, bands needed to fit loosely into the categories of rock, pop, R&B, soul, blues, and jazz. Today, each genre has 30-something subgenres, and bands and musicians must fit neatly into one of them. There is very little crossover between music, between genres. M music has become very specific. Uh, in 50 years, music has gone from doo-woppers with nerdy glasses and suits to the artists of today having almost complete freedom of expression. Nowadays, we ask ourselves when thinking of radio censorship what exactly cannot be said on the airwaves rather than what can be said. There was once a day when Elvis Presley could only be filmed from the waist up. Music itself has become secondary to the lives of those who make it. Um, the last change being, uh, last two, technology and the changing of theme of music. For theme, early rock was based almost entirely upon love songs and the heartbreak that followed their demise. And in the 60s, it was mostly anti-war ballads. In the 80s, it was the glorified excess that was the 80s. As for technology, it's changed greatly. The live shows of new bands are much more flamboyant than they were once. They have pyrotechnics, amazing light shows, and great guest performers. They have so much more to work with than, than uh, bands from the past used to when it comes to album and even on stage. How has rock and roll impacted society? It has not only influenced but sustained itself through generations. Rock and roll has had a huge impact on American society and other genres of music like hip hop. Rock and roll has constantly set the trend for pop music and influenced numerous different genres. It has allowed artists to speak on political issues and social issues and can be credited with integrating the teens of the 50s, 60s, and 70s and helping black artists get played on mainstream radio. Rock and roll, although originating in the U.S., has even influenced cultures in different parts of the world, especially Europe. Rock and roll has many different forms, from heavy metal to classic rock, punk, alternative, and grunge. Some people believe if it weren't for artists like Little Richard and others, that the social scene between blacks and whites would never have merged. Just like its influence on other forms of music, rock and roll has influenced clothing, television, and dance. Many of the dance fads of the 60s and 70s were based on popular rock and roll songs like Chubby Checker's Twist. How has rock changed through the years, 1940s and 60s? Rock music of the 50s and 60s can be traced back to the late 1940s when the popular style of the day, country and blues, morphed into a new sound, aided by electric guitars and a steady drum beat. Pioneering rock artists of the 50s, such as, Ch <clears throat> such as Chuck Berry, leaned heavily on classic blues. By the early 60s, Berry's followers, most notably the Rolling Stones, expanded rock's scope by transitioning from single artists into musicians capable of producing cohesive albums of songs. 1970s. As rock music became the dominant form of popular music, new bands built on their predecessor's strengths while branching out into new territory. Led Zeppelin gave rock a darker, heavier tone, becoming one of the 70s most popular bands and helping to start a new genre known as hard rock or heavy metal. Around the same time, Pink Floyd added psychedelic elements and complex arrangements, creating concept albums tied together by a single theme. In the late 70s, as a response to what they thought of as pretentious hippie bands, such as Pink Floyd, groups like The Clash simplified rocks down to its core ingredients, and punk was born. The 1980s. As the 80s began, mainstream rock lost stream. In such a creatively stagnant environment, subgenres started to assert their dominance. By the end of the 80s, college rock had become such a lucrative alternative to mainstream rock that it received a new name, alternative rock. 
the 1990s and through the present. With, a, with, with the success of Nirvana's Nevermind in 1991, alternative rock became the dominant popular music. But while other bands soon sprung up as a part of the so-called grunge movement, a merging of hard rock and punk, other groups like Soundgarden straddled the worlds of alternative and mainstream rock music. With the suicide of Nirvana's frontman, Kurt, Kurt Cobain, alternative music started to lose its luster by the middle of the decade, setting the stage for mainstream rock's reemergence. And last thing, I chose the 30 most, what I think to be the 30 most defining moments of rock and roll. Uh, starting with, in 1954, Elvis Presley records That's All Right Mama at Sun Studios, Memphis Rock and Roll's Big Bang. And ending in 2000 with the birth of Napster, launched by 19-year-old Sean Fanning from his uncle's garage. Napster was the download service that provided free music to an estimated 100 million users in 2000. Thank you. Uh, any questions? It was eventually made illegal, wasn't it? It was illegal when it started. Yeah, it was illegal when it started. Right. Yes. Yeah. The Beatles. The Beatles and then Bob Dylan and then the Stones and then the Who. The Beatles. The Beatles, the Beatles yeah. The Beatles, yeah. What was the most interesting thing you learned? Um mostly about how punk was born because I didn't know that much about, you know, I knew a lot about the 50s and the 60s and even into the 70s, but, you know, more modern, close to this time, I didn't really know that much about. And how out of all the things you could have researched, you picked this? Because it was the thing that I find most interesting. I originally just wanted to write about the Beatles because they're my favorite band, but then it sort of turned into this really big thing about how rock and roll started and sort of because everything kind of affects everything can't really talk about just the Beatles without talking about how rock and roll was started. And if you don't if you talk about the Beatles, then you have to talk about who they influenced and who they impacted. Yes, because even John Lennon said if it hadn't been for Elvis Presley, there would have been no Beatles. So did you choose this because you're interested in music as a career or just because it's a favorite hobby? Uh, it's my favorite hobby, but I might look at it as a career, but not really as like a singer or a musician myself. But the Yes. Okay, well, Let It Be and Hey Jude are the most popular, but my personal favorite would be Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, and that album uh, by the same name was very, very important to music history because it was the first concept theme album. So, and that would... In I don't, but it's on my Christmas list for this year, is a turntable and all of their albums. Thank you.